Hey, uh, welcome to my crib, everyone. I hope you guys enjoy your stay because we might be here for a while with the uh, coronavirus, you know, still going around. Um, but I am safe in here and I hope you guys are safe in there as well, wherever you may be right now. Um, but yes, I'm going to try my best to do this, guys. It's going to be, it's going to be rough. It's going to be inconsistent because the camera is literally sitting on my bed right now. Um, the camera or like the, the microphone is obviously not as good. And then just the camera itself, the quality is not as good either. So I'm going to try my best. We will still, you know, do our best to bring you guys news. You guys will still get, you know, daily news. I will, I will, I, will, I got you guys. All right. That's all I'm trying to say. Also, please do not judge my wire management under my computer. I understand it's, it's, it's gross. I get it. You know, there's wires, but <laughs> regardless, <laughs> Let's hop into some news. But we have a huge Overwatch story to talk about. Players not being paid on time, players being denied the ability to play on an OWL team, despite definitely having the skill to, is something that we saw in the past, but that is gonna be Envision Esports and their CEO, Arter, who the Los Angeles Valiant player, McGravy, actually had something to say about on a vast podcast where he talks about pretty much how apparently awful the org and the owner of the org was. Let's watch that clip. You. And so yep. a lot of people looked at this roster and were like, okay, they're pro we're, we expect some to be in Overwatch League in the 2019, 2019 season. Mm -hmm. But then it, it, there just wasn't anyone there. Like, no one moved up. And it, there was, like, rumors circulating of, like, you guys weren't allowed to try out. Is that, like, yep. fact? Were you guys actually not allowed to try out? 100% accurate. Um, what ended up happening is we played the contender season, and then... We ended up getting a decent amount of offers to try out. Like, I think I had I had the standard, like, I, like, I think Boston let everybody try out, like, as per usual. Um, and I've been in Boston and Philly, and they both messaged me, and, and both of them, I went to my owner, and I was like, can I try out at least? Like, even if they offer me a spot, you say no, like, whatever. I at least want to try out and get my name out there. And he's like, no. The chef said no. And I think at the time, I don't think there was anything he could have done to stop us, but just the threat of him saying no and like, I'll cut your money was enough for us not to do the tryouts. So what was the rationale behind that? Because like, there are some wa there's always been wacky stories floating around behind the Envision owner. Uh, Artur is his name, right? Artur or whatever? Artur. Yeah. Why Was there a rationale ever delivered for why no tryouts were allowed? Because you guys apparently, I think at the time you were paid pretty decently, but like, yeah. was that the reasoning or what exactly was it? Um, the reason he was, he thought he was going to get a, a, an Overwatch League spot. I don't know oh. why he thought, I, I don't know why he thought he was going to get an Overwatch League spot, but he was confident. Uh. Uh, I remember multiple times, you know, talking to us and said he was talking to the denial guy, trying to get him and the denial guy to work, work together. And denial, get denial and envision denial. together. Oh, denial what, a, and envision. what a power the, the couple. Perfect, the perfect duo. My um, goodness. Absolutely. Yeah. So he tried to like make it swallowable for us but every time we were so pissed like well, even yeah, before I mean, this you the we got change. paid we got paid late every month and this is like at a time where i could barely afford to eat and i was living off ramen every single day of the week so anytime i didn't get paid and then i was helping my parents pay the bills as well so when i didn't get paid my mom's rent got paid late so you know every month i couldn't i couldn't end up paying for rent you know couldn't eat so there'd be times where we did get paid for 90 days after you're supposed to get paid. Wow. So McGravy was a part of Envision Esports, which is an NA contenders team that while they were actually playing contenders, they were doing pretty solid. They were they were a good team. And a bunch of OWL teams actually reached out to those players and said, hey, do you guys want to come sign up with us, play with the big boy orgs, you know, play with the big boy Overwatch boys? And the owner of Envision Esports looked at them and he said, he said, no, you're not, you're not joining them. You're staying with me. And he said no, because he thought he was going to be getting an OWL slot for himself, which if he did, he already had a pretty solid team in contenders, so his mindset was basically, this team's really good, they could probably compete at an OWL level, so I'm just gonna keep them, and essentially, you know, kinda deny their dreams, deny their money, and, you know, deny the future that they've been looking for. So these players are denied an OWL spot because of a greedy owner, the same owner that even after this team disbanded, could not pay those players. He still owed them thousands of dollars in late payments because he claimed that the Overwatch Tier 2 scene was not enough of a good investment for him. He's not getting enough returns. He says that Blizzard was not actually supporting it enough, and as a result, he could not pay his players. And yes, we're mainly hearing the story from the player's side, but owing each person $3,000 and then paying them over a month late when they're probably already tight on money, and then denying them a better future in esports, and then on top of that, they wanted to partner with Denial Esports, which is another org that was also hated in the esports scene, 
Um, yeah, this is looking like one of the worst team contracts that we've ever seen in a major esport. And as for Denial Esports, that was the team that XQC was playing on near the start of his Overwatch career, where he also cited that they did not pay their players either. Basically, I saw a tweet saying Denial played all their old players that they, that they, that they scammed, right? We paid all our players. Guys, they, they changed all the players. I did not get an email. I didn't get a DM. I didn't get a message. I didn't get nothing from them. Not a single thing. And later on, I talked to my ultimates. Nobody got anything except one person. They said they offered them $200 out of the 2.8 or 2.4 thousand dollars that they stole. Right? And then they say, oh, we made all the players whole. No, not only did you not do it, you didn't even partially do it. And on, and on, dude, and on top, dude, I can't, I can't begin to, I can't, yeah, I'm done. So, a selfish org owner wanting to partner with another corrupt org owner, and keep in mind, Denial had shut down twice already, twice because of financial issues. They owed XQC and his teammates thousands. And then we skip forward to present day, where those players that were playing for Envision are now playing on OWL teams, actually getting paid, and no longer stuck in a dead-end org with an owner who's just chasing a bag. But hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please bear with me as I record from home. Again, you know, this is going to take a lot of getting used to, especially for me, because I don't know. This is, uh, it's just different, you know? I, I it's, it's a whole different editing process, and it's, it's going to take a bit more time now, but we will get it done. We will still get esports talk news out there, and you guys will all be viewing, hopefully. Thank you all so much for watching. I will be seeing you all very soon. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Please stay safe out there, of course. Stay in your homes, and, uh... Wash your socks. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>